So I thought um, one thing that would be interesting to talk about is Wi-Fi's hidden node problem. And this applies to any sort of wireless networks. But it's, a, it's an interesting thing that appears when you start using wireless networks to communicate. So let's start with a little diagram and we'll build this up as we're going. Typical wireless network, we have an access point, which we'll represent as an aerial. And then we'll have our laptop or something that we want to connect to it. So they can communicate via wireless networking. So it sends a signal over a radio wave on a particular frequency to the access point and the access point can send one back on the same frequency. Wi-Fi uses the same frequency to transmit and send. So this machine is able to detect if anything else is sending on the network as well. Now, as we all know, because we've all fallen found of this, is that we've walked too far away from the access point and we suddenly lose signal. There is a range on Wi-Fi. As we move further away, the signal drops off, the intensity drops, the signal strength drops, and eventually it goes off a cliff and you lose connectivity. Now, why is that a problem? Well, the problem we've got is if we've got more than one node in our network, let's just draw another person using a laptop or some device here, then if they both try to transmit at the same time, so let's call this machine A, and let's call that one machine B. If machine A tries to transmit, that's fine. It can use the shared medium, the shared radio space to transmit. And machine B could transmit at a different point. It can use the same shared radio space to transmit. And the data gets transmitted and received by the access point. No problem. But if these were to try to transmit at the same time, then they would both use the same radio space and the signals would interact with each other, interfere with each other, they'd corrupt each other. And so at the access point, there'd be garbage received and the data wouldn't be transmitted. So the way that Wi-Fi is designed, it borrows from Ethernet and quite a lot, but the way it's designed is that before it transmits, a device will listen on the network because it can receive on the same frequency, unlike when we looked at Aloha, Wi-Fi transmits and receives on the same frequency, so it can hear what other devices are doing. It will listen on the network and ask the question, is there anything being transmitted? If there's something being transmitted, then it thinks, well, okay, if I transmit now, it's going to corrupt that. My data is not going to get through. The other person's data is not going to get through. What it does is it waits for a certain amount of time. And then after that certain amount of time, which you pick a random delay, it will then transmit its data if the network is then clear, if the wireless frequency is then clear at that point. So if you've got multiple nodes in there, it's not a problem because they can cooperate. Before any node sends, it will listen to the wireless space. And if it's empty of signals, there's no carrier, then it will transmit. This is what we call carrier sense with multiple access. It's used on Wi-Fi, it's used on Ethernet and things. It's the idea that before you're transmitting something, you listen to check that there's no carrier present before you send it, because otherwise it's just going to corrupt it which is quite how we do human speech. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I waited till a break then before I said that. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good analogy. Um, we've all sort of been in situations where if you want to have a good conversation, one person's talking, then when they stop, you start and things, you don't start talking while someone else is talking. Otherwise, it ends up as an in yeah, intelligible. Yeah, you can't tell what Exactly, it's, it's happening now. Exactly. Time, yeah. Now, the thing we have to remember is that each of these machines, there's a range that the signal will go. We said that at the beginning. As you move away from the wireless access point, the signal drops off and so on. So let's just draw a circle. This is an arbitrary size circle. It's not going to be a circle. And there's going to be a similar one for this machine, which is probably going to do something like, let's label this. This is the one for machine B, and this is the one for machine A. Now, both of these circles, they go on bigger in the other side as well. Machine A and machine B, are in those things, so they can hear when the other one transmits, not a problem. Let's suppose we have a third machine though, let's call it machine C, and it's right down here, we'll call that machine C. Can you see that on the other camera? Yes, you can. Hi. And let's suppose though that its transmission circle, the range it can get, sort of does that. Now it can transmit perfectly fine to the access point, and it can receive data. A can transmit to the access point, and it can receive data. B can transmit to the access point. But the key problem we've got here is that machine C is out of range of both machine A and B. So we could get the problem where machine A decides it, the network's clear because it can't hear anything on there. It can't sense anything on the wireless frequencies. And machine C does exactly the same thing. It can't sense anything on the wireless frequencies and they both try and transmit at the same time. And what's actually received by the access point is just corrupted data. Neither packet got through. This is what we call the hidden node problem because there's another node that this machine is not aware of 
that can transmit and vice versa there's another there's nodes that this machine is not aware of that can transmit but the actual thing they're transmitting to can hear both of them because it's sitting in this gap in the middle where it can hear all of them and so we need to have some way that we can organize these machines so that when they transmit they do so in a way so that the access point doesn't get corrupted data even though machine a and c can't see or hear each other they can't sort of pick up each other's transmissions now you've got a similar problem on the original ethernet back when you had a shared physical piece of wire for each machine on ethernet they were all connected to that uh, you had exactly the same problem and they used the same idea of carrier sense with multiple access in that they would wait until the network was clear but they could detect, because the signal was on a piece of wire, it didn't drop off in the same way, they could detect if another machine transmitted at the same time as them. And so they could detect the collision, stop transmitting, wait a random amount of time, and then re retransmit. And as long as the random amount of times were different, one of them would be able to transmit and the other would get it through. You can't do that on Wi-Fi because it can't detect the carrier from this machine and vice versa, this can't detect the carrier from that machine. So we need to take a different approach. So on Ethernet, they use a system called CSMA, Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection. We should probably do a computer file on that at some point. That was the original Ethernet. These days when it's switched and things, that problem disappeared, but that's another computer file that someone needs to do at some point. Can't do that with Wi-Fi. So we need a different approach. And the approach we use is Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance. So we use this sort of this approach instead. So with Ethernet, you detect the collision and recover from it. With Wi-Fi, you try and stop the collision happening in the first place. So you, you do something with the three machines and the access point you've got here to stop the collision in the first place. Let's think about the problem we've got. We've got a problem where machine A and machine C are transmitting at the same time and the data's interfering with each other. We need something to try and stop them transmitting at the same time. So what we want, is a mechanism where one of the machines, let's use machine A as an example, can reserve the radio space while it sends the packet. So we want some way of reserving it so all the other machines know, don't send anything at this point. And so the way that we do this in Wi-Fi is we send out what's called a request to send or RTS message from the machine that's trying to send to the access point. So this sends out a request to send message and this message is designed to be very, very short. The idea being that if it's very, very short, it's very unlikely to collide with anything. And so we send a message out from machine A that's very, very small. It's received by the access point. It's not received by machine C, but it's received by the access point. And it gets that request to send, and then it sends back what is called a clear to send packet with details of which machine is clear to send. And it sends that out over the Wi-Fi network. And the beautiful thing about that is that when the clear to send message is sent out, it'll go out to all the machines, will also be picked up by machine C, even though it's not in range of A and B, and so it didn't get the request to send packet, it will still see the clear to send. And so it knows at that point that, hang on, something's about to transmit on this network. Okay, I was about to send something, but I know it's been reserved for another machine. I'll wait some specified period of time before I send out my request to send to the access point and sort of get the permission to um, use the shared radio space to send my messages. So what we do with collision avoidance, we stop the collision happening in the first place by getting each of the machines to reserve the radio space before they send their data. You might think, well, what happens if machine A and C both send a request to send at the same time? Well, that's not a problem because if they both send at the same time, then it'll either get corrupted, in which case, the access point doesn't receive it and doesn't send out the clear to send. So neither of them receive the clear to send. So never send out their data. They'll just delay it for some period of time and then try to send out the request to send again. Or one of these will get through fractionally before the other. And when they receive the clear to send, the other machine will see that it's not for them that they've received that clear to send. So they don't send anyway. So, and then they can send the request to send anyway. So this approach of just sending out a very small packet means that it's very unlikely to collide anyway because it's so short. And so the chances of two machines in that very small time period transmitting at the same time becomes very, very small. If you're sending out a 1500 byte packet, much more chances of that colliding with something else. I mean, if you think about it, if you're sending out 1500 bytes, that'll take a certain amount of time. And you're sending out another 1500 bytes, that only has to sort of 
move back one byte of overlap when you've corrupted both packets, um, even though most of them have actually got transmitted without any problem. If you're sending sort of a very small 64 or less, whatever size it is, packet, then the chances of them overlapping are far less. Example of this, if you've ever seen a very big, heavy goods vehicle going down the road, what you'll often see first is that they don't just send that down in one go and sort of try and force it through waiting for the other bits of the traffic to get off the road. You often see these police dispatch riders and things that go ahead of it, which sort of clear the road first so that the heavy goods vehicle could go through and things. Exactly the same thing here. We're sending out the request to send, which clears the way, and then the big packet that we want to transmit goes through after it. The only slight change from that that it actually does, I think, in Wi-Fi is that if the data you're sending is very, very small, then it's sort of bundled in with the request to send because otherwise it ends up using more bandwidth than you need to. The chances are that the data will get there. And again, you're going to send out another request to send if you don't get it. So if the data is very, very small, you can still send it out and sort of optimize things a bit there. So that's the hidden node problem and the way that we use carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance to solve it on Wi-Fi. Uh, over and out. Yep, over and out. <laughs> so you should never say over and out, it's no, just out. It's out, is it? Yeah, okay. because as soon as you say over, they're saying, I'm not going to talk anymore. So if you say over and out, you're, the first over is sort of broken, I think. So uh, just okay. out. Okay. I've <laughs> never used CB radio, but I have heard that. But it, but it is literally, that's that's another shared medium, isn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. Sort of ex need, exactly, yeah. You need some kind of protocol. You need sure. a protocol to sort of use this at the same time and things. So yeah, it's a good analogy. Out. Out. If we just scroll forward in time, we can see that as things start to happen, we get to this point where everything starts to reroute. And rather than going directly to Facebook, you can start to see it all is going W. This is some actual ciphertext that we'll be breaking later. Does it honestly start with Zeus, as in Conrad's Zeus? Yes. In the reality of random, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah.